Howdy all you fantastic Reddit fans. Thanks for joining me for two stories from Surviving Infidelity. One deals with a woman bumping into someone from her past. The other deals with a pregnant wife's infidelity. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Let's do this. This story is titled, They Found Me. I don't understand how this could have happened. I was starting to feel better about myself. The therapy was nice and let me get all the crying and screaming I'd kept bottled up for so many years. I was starting to feel like the old me again and it felt wonderful. I don't know if there's such a thing as happiness high, but that's the only way I feel like I could describe it. The issue, my longtime friend of 16 years was in town and we decided to go to dinner and catch up on how life had been since life separated us after graduation. He went to the Air Force and I had family obligations and online classes. While we were taking a walk through the park we used to play at as kids, we saw them. My ex fiance and the affair partner. They came right up to us and she even went in for a hug. They talked like they hadn't destroyed me all those years ago. How they were hoping I'd come to the wedding. She was still wearing the ring that should have been mine. My best friend doesn't know everything because I never told him all of it. He's vindictively overprotective of me but he knows who they both are. All I could keep thinking and asking myself was, how did they find me? Who told them? Are they stalking me somehow? Was this a setup? I was scared, but somehow I still managed to smile and act cordial. I acted like it didn't bother me and it seemed to really get to my ex to see me hanging onto my bestie's arm. We used to do this when we were little too. I naturally refused the wedding invite by simply stating the fact that it'd be rude for me to be there when everyone there would know who I am and it'd put the wedding in a bad atmosphere. I may not have forgiven them for what they did to me, but I do believe everyone deserves to be happy on their wedding day. He told me he was sorry. Again, I remained stoic and civil. I like to think my life experience with working retail might have some part to play in handling difficult people with a smile, lol. I wish I could say that I left feeling like an immense weight had been lifted off my shoulders. It didn't. I definitely cried again, broke down and told my bestie the entire truth. Needless to say I had to stop him from getting out of the car to go after them multiple times during that. But, he just assured me that even if everyone else left me, he'd still be there. And it made me feel better. So while the night was bad, thanks to that, it wasn't too horrible. Comment 1. Wow, I am so sorry they put you in this difficult and painful position. TBH if they had walked up to me and acted like nothing happened it would not have been pleasant and certainly no hugs given. If you see him out say I have nothing to say to either of you so please leave me alone. You do not have to engage with them. If they continue to push, I can't believe your ex bestie thought it was okay to hug you and ask you to the wedding. She is a manipulative skank, tell them they are both liars and cheaters and you will never be friends again so from now on there is no reason to speak with you. Then drop the bomb in front of a fair partner and tell your ex to lose your number. Why does he call you? Seriously, you should still be NC even now several years later. His drive-by love bombs do nothing but make him feel better because he was such a shite to you. It will always be about him. Don't give either one of them the satisfaction of thinking that you in any way forgive them or forgot what they did. I know it hurts but you missed the bullet. He knows he lost you, so he is settling for another cheater. Be the class act you are with maybe a little more directness. You should not have to plaster on a fake smile because of their frickery, you can be a totally direct to them both about them. Karma is a biatch and it will bite them in the arse sooner or later. Also the next time you bestie sees them, let him do whatever he wants. Perhaps then these two inconsiderate narcissistic buttheads will steer clear of you. Good luck and many happy blessings to you. Comment 2. If I was your ex I would be so pissed off that you seemed so happy now. Why weren't you upset when we cruelly invited you to my wedding? How can I mean so little to you now? You did fantastically well up. As someone who still dissolves into silent panic whenever my ex's name is mentioned, I salute you for your grace and courage in the face of direct fire. You nailed it. Comment 3. They feel guilty and know they did you wrong, so they're trying to get you to accept them as a couple to make it all right. They are hoping all the family and friends that know what happened will then accept them too. I can't believe everyone is on their side. Stay strong. Continue to not share your private information on social media or with friends or family, unfortunately. Comment 4. You will realize soon that you escaped a much bigger headache, had you married your trash ex. You dodge a huge bullet, there will be a great guy coming your way in the near future. You ex and a fair partner will be meeting karma in the future wait and see. Comment 5. 
When he told you he was sorry, you should have simply said something like, your loss, or everyone makes mistakes, or, to really get to them, I should thank you. I now know what true love really is. They'd both have that on their mind for a very long time. This story is titled, Pregnant Wife Cheated. My wife and I have been married three years, and have a two-year-old son, with a very recent pregnancy, ten weeks, for our next baby. We both work from home, and have been locked down for the past year almost, so living and seeing each other every day, none of which I am complaining about, I actually love being with the family. There are other stressor in my life though, I have low self-esteem, I stress about money, I stress about my extended family's health, I stress about my job. But I try not to let any of this affect my family life, at least with my son. My wife is fully aware of the stress I feel though, I have expressed I am stressed enough times, and I accept most of it cannot be changed at this time COVID. My wife and I are open with each other on everything, at least I thought, and we both have our faces registered for unlocking on each other's phones, face ID. I had full trust in her and never once doubted anything she was doing on her phone, no matter the hour or even lack of response while she was on social media. I let her have it, because I fully trusted her. Cut to last week and I was just bringing her phone to her from another room. The phone was lying down flat, and I turned the screen to face me like I generally do expecting to see her home screen pic of our son. Instead it opened to her photo gallery and I found some barely clothed pics, and one incriminating one of her lying down and slightly pulling down her underwear. I didn't want to believe what I was seeing and handed her the phone. But it was killing me, and I had to confront her to ask what those pics were. This is where the lies start. Her first response was to just say, I want to feel good about myself before I get the bump from pregnancy. I called BS on that and said you don't take pics in those poses for that. She confessed that she was sending them to someone, but that's all it led to. I didn't want to know who or how it happened, I was just starting to process everything. I chose to ignore it for that day, mostly because I was in shock, and also had to take care of our toddler. I was distant the whole day, not wanting to be with her, I wanted space. I browsed Reddit, Quora, any forum for info or advice that night, I had no one to talk to, and nowhere to go in lockdown. I barely slept, and the next day I demanded to know who it was. Turns out it was a guy from work, and they had been using their work team's chat to communicate. I asked her how far it went, and she said just the pictures, nothing more. I suspected more BS and then asked to see the chats on Teams, and on Instagram. She was hesitant, she didn't want to show me in fear of not wanting to hurt me, yeah I know, should have called it. I was getting more upset, but wanted to give her the benefit of the doubt, but I told her I cannot continue until I see the messages. She gave more excuses of not wanting to hurt me, but I was beginning to see a pattern. The next day was a work day, and because we share an office in our house, I could see a few times she was furiously typing away on a team's chat. No guesses who it was. I confronted her after work, and she still did not want to show the messages. I gave up, I told her I need to see this otherwise we are separating. She came to me the following day and confessed that she lied, they did meet, twice, and the last time was a week earlier when all they did was kiss. I got incensed, how could she? I knew they didn't just kiss, and compounded with all the trickle truths, it was even crazier to think I'd believe that. I demanded then and there, show me the chats. I knew she had deleted the messages on Instagram, and the slimy affair partner was trying to purge his chat messages. The sheer volume of messages was telling, I was reading messages for a whole two hours, going back three months. It started off flirty, then crossed a line becoming sexually charged, even expressing how they would freak each other. She was pining for him on the chats, and what was the worst was that they both stated what they were doing was wrong, but continued with it. Now, we're in lockdown here, so can't really go out, except for groceries etc., yet these two decided their escapade was worthy enough to forego the lockdown, and our marriage. We've been fighting every day since, I don't think she's remorseful, even though she says she is. She is becoming headstrong, suggesting that she also has her feelings, and that she doesn't have to live like this, by this, I mean me looking through her phone now, not trusting her. She blames the affair on me not being intimate with her, not giving her the attention she needs. I tell her she has broken me, and thrown away our marriage, but she wants me to just get through it so we can mend the relationship. Writing this down, it feels like I am being a chump and taking all this, maybe I am just weak, but I am scared of how our children will be, I love them so much. We have marriage counseling in two days, I am bracing myself for the criticism from her, and if she uses that as an excuse for what she did. I need some guidance on what to do, should we separate. 
I am afraid I am not that financially stable to endure it, and we have a baby going to be born soon. How can I build trust when she's gaslighting? Sorry if this is long, I have no other outlet for my grief. Comment 1. I hope the child is yours because it just seems too close for comfort. Once all trust is lost you need to move on, sorry. Comment 2. 1. Get STD tested. 2. Scrap couples counseling. Get individual counseling. 3. Read the book, No More Mr. Nice Guy. 4. Get DNA test done on your kid. If possible, for current pregnancy also. 5. Tell how you need to separate right now. 6. Read article on doing 180 on the survivinginfidelity.com website. 7. Don't leave the house. 8. Keep the evidence as your insurance. 9. Tell how you are going to talk to a lawyer and do it. These are the steps you should start with. And remember you can stop a divorce if you think she is remorseful enough to be taken back. Right now she is blaming you for her affair which is blame shifting. Try to understand you did nothing to cause her affair. And it was not a mistake. She willingly scripted and executed the affair process. Good luck. Comment 3. I would just like to add they both even admitted what they were doing was wrong. There is a non-evasive paternity test that can be done now that she is over 8 weeks. And I would advise her HR department of the affair as they were sharing nudes or at least sexual messages through team chat. Also if he is married or in a relationship his significant other should also be told. Comment 4. Dude you can't mend this if she isn't taking any responsibility for what she's doing. This was never your fault. Even she knows it. She's only saying that to avoid the guilt and shame internally for her. They even knew what they were doing was wrong. And they still did it. Don't let your kids suffer due to you both staying together. Get out of there and separate ASAP and then start to look for a divorce or when you can afford it. You gotta put yourself and your family first. Don't let her walk all over you. The fact that she kept lying, didn't disclose everything, and was trickle-truthing and still blames you. There is no going back. Once that affair fog, lust goes away and she's sitting there alone she's gonna come crying back to you. But that's where you take your worth and move on. Please don't let her walk all over you. Take your power back man and end this relationship and be co-parents. This relationship isn't salvageable. Good luck dude. Comment 5. Find out if a fair partner has a partner and tell them that he has been having an affair with your wayward wife and that she is now 10 weeks pregnant. Has your wayward wife started looking for another job yet? She can't keep working with him and stay married to you. What will happen when they have unfettered access to each other again? What happened before lockdown? You certainly don't have the full story and she's downplaying and trying to rug sweep. If she says that her affair is your fault then this position has to change before you can reconcile. It's no big deal for her. Your current trajectory is divorce. When someone lies it's hard to tell where the lies end and the truth begins. She only met him twice. Just for a quick peck on the cheek. I thought we were talking about adults here not teens. Thank you so very much for listening. Please check out my other videos and like and subscribe.